a reason and has purpose and a meaning. So every time you read and study God's Word and you see God's Word, there's something in there that brings it all to revelations. Amen? <clears throat> I truly believe that. I love it. I love the old and the new, and, and I love the new. We, we stay in the new a lot, but to <clears throat> the old just uh, complements the new, doesn't it? Amen. It's all, it's all His Word. But uh, what I want to do is uh, God wants me to minister a little bit on some stuff here tonight talking about the old and the new, and we're going to look at it and uh, see what it is. And it's going to be, I'm going to be talking about, you know, I, I preach a lot about like living a holy life and, and doing what? Obey the commandments. If you live in a holy life, you obey in his commandments. Now, we mess up sometimes, but a Christian doesn't intentionally mess up. It happens sometimes, you know. I have hit my thumb when I was a young Christian. I might have said the wrong word when I hit that thumb. But praise God, I got better. I got hit in the head with an axe handle one time, and I didn't uh, curse and do nothing like it. I said, praise God, come on, devil, do it again. <laughs> yeah, I did, wiping the blood off my head. And I hit my own self in the head. Nobody hit me. I, I was splitting wood, B.R., and I had a couple of them axes laying around, and I hit that thing, and one of them axe handles just popped up. Ron popped me right in the head and knocked me up. I mean, it got me good. But I didn't curse that time. I was proud because I had gone up another spiritual level. I really believe, I, you know, you know, but that don't mean we still don't mess up even seasoned uh, uh uh, Christians, amen, but my desire is to get higher, higher, higher spiritually with the Lord and, and be able to be used of him magnificently to glorify his name, him, amen, him. So let's look, and uh, we're going to talk about some of the old and new. I'm I, I just thinking about my brother Richard. I, I, I believe he's playing a gold guitar in heaven. I do. I believe he's there with the Lord, and, and I, I always liked Richard, and he used to sing this song in the prisons. We'd go to the prison. The old man's dead. Man, I used to love that song, you know. The old man's dead, y'all. The new man, when you get saved, the new man comes on the scene and, and you start doing the thing God wants you to do. Amen? Think about it. Let's look in some of the the commandments. We're going to look at some y'all might be familiar with, you know, some of the peoples of America and the public people and all that that's uh, being controlled by the satanic agenda of the Biden administration. That's where it's at. They take the Ten Commandments out and stuff like that, but they, the Ten Commandments is still good today, too. If you don't believe it, go out there and try to steal and see what they'll do to you. Amen? You throw that in the way. I got some more we're going to look at, too. <laughs> let's, let's look. Everybody's looking here. And I tell you what, as I got to studying and reading some of this, you know, about every one of us in here, not every one of us, maybe, but a lot of us in here is, 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 is done some of these. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I tell the Lord, I'm not a saint, and I wasn't a saint. He called me. I don't know why, but he did. That might be why he changed me. Hallelujah. Look at here. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Is that what the Word of God says in Exodus 23? And I'm going to be in Exodus 23. If you want to get your Bible, if you got your Bible and you want to mark some of these, you know, I go through them and I tell you which I can tell you which the tenth commandment is and the eighth. But we're going to look at the ten commandments this afternoon and see what how it relates to the commandments in the New Testament. Okay, we're going to see how it corresponds. The same. It's uh, still appropriate today as it was uh, in uh, Moses' day, the Ten Commandments, when he come off the mountain. You know, when Moses come off the mountain, you know, I like old Moses. He was a basket case, you know. And when he come off the mountain, praise God, you know, what he had in his hand was written in stone, baby. So it's still good today. Amen. Maybe the seventh don't uh, kick like it did back in the Old Testament. It's a little different, but that's okay. We're going to look and see what God says. Amen. I like it. We're going we're gonna to kind of correspond the Old and the New, the Old Testament and New Testament. We're going to see where they connect each other 
uh, together in it. A amen. Because you got these skeptics out here, and they want to tell you, oh, we're not in the old. Uh, there's a balance to all that. We're not in the old covenant. We're not. But there's still some things that still appropriate the Ten Commandments and stuff today. It's still in there, and Jesus talked about them. Amen. And so we're going to look right here. Look here. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Now, I'll tell you right now, you know, I told you about uh, you're not supposed to love the world. You're supposed to uh, hate the world. The world system is evil. The world system rep represents the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and pride. It says so. We read it in God's scriptures this morning. I'm here to tell you right now, that's what's happening to the world out there today. They're following that almighty dollar around wherever to go. They don't care what the results and what happens. And you got all these people that want to be a dictator and rule the world and all this everything going on out there. Well, it's evil. But when you become a Christian, you start digging in God's Word and you see in where when we start obeying His commandments what we're supposed to do as a Christian. Amen. Now let's look right here and see a little bit. I like this. <clears throat> you know, thou shalt have no other gods before me. What did our Lord say? One of my favorite uh, scriptures in the Bible is uh, Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things are going to come to you. He knows you have need of everything uh, uh, that uh, uh, that's going on, but I tell you right now, you got to seek him first. And i tell you what's happening in the world, and I was guilty of this one a long time ago, but I'm not anymore, and I give God the praise for that. Amen. You can put another thing out there in this world, and it can become your idol. It can become your God. It might be some kind of soap opera, a TV program, or some honky-tonk song out there that the lyrics is evil on. I'm here to tell you right now, you got to put God where God's supposed to be, in your home, in your heart, and where he's supposed to be. Amen? I'll tell you right now, I'm just throwing some stuff out there, you know. Uh, other people can have these little gods that they set over here and move over here, you know. Oh, uh, my Buddha fell and broke. i got to go buy another and i got to put it over here. Somebody move it for me. Well, our God is a living God, the true living God. He is alive. Hallelujah. You know that by this morning, those who's here this morning felt his awesome presence. Amen. He's an awesome God. But I tell you, you can before you know it, you can put other things before God and it become your island. It, it can become your God. And I just throw out a few things out there. You know, you got people that go hunt and fish and, and play golf and do all that. There's nothing wrong with that if you honor God first and put him into perspective. But when you start going and doing it on Sunday and Sunday night and other times when you know you shouldn't be, that becomes your God. You better check your inventory and find out what you got going on in your life and you better get it straightened out amen because god said he wants a you to live us to live a holy life before him and if some of these things some of the people think that hey i'm okay but i do one of these things but i'm okay the lord it won't work you know when i come to god i didn't come to god 90 percent say god i got one sin i want to keep that sin right there i didn't do that when I finally got on fire for God and I sold out to God, I gave him 100% plus five. <laughs> Amen? And being counted like that. Anyway, I'll tell you, when you come to God, you got to give him 100%. Amen? You can't give him this part. It don't work. But you give him 100%, and I'll assure you right now, you're going to have an awesome life because of him, and you're going to have it with in eternity with him when the time comes for us to pass from this place. Amen. Uh, you know, I could I could just stay here all night on this idols and stuff out there in the world. You know what really used to get me, I, uh, the season's about over now, I guess, unless it's fall season, uh, ball and all that, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But it really got me when I come to church on Sunday morning and all of them parents has got their children out there and they're playing ball in the ball field right down here at the park piedmont park down here they're playing ball there's nothing wrong with it sportsmanship i'm a big fan of that i used to play at sports myself and uh, and all of that and i think it's a wonderful thing but it's got to be in its uh, balance uh, you don't take your kids down there on sunday uh, and play ball when they should be in church first then go play ball that's the way i see it you know i'm just using that as an example 
But those little kids don't know no better. They're out there playing ball and hoping that they're going to be a, uh, you know, the parents hoping he's going to be a, a good hitter and all that stuff, you know, and everything's going to be good. But instead of growing them spiritually in God and telling them about God, it's our accountability as, uh, as the stewards and spiritual head of the household men. Uh, we're supposed to bring our children up uh, to know who God is, to fear God. Amen. I feared my daddy, but I loved him to death. But he could wear me out. I feared that part. So I obeyed what he said to do in the house most of the time. Even then, and I'd break the rule, and I'd suffer the consequences. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That's the way it's meant to be. God said, you spoil, uh, you spare the rod, you will spoil the child. Well, we got children out there ruling the parents now. That's not right. That's wrong. God didn't mean it to be that way. You accountable. These people out there is trying to say my kid wants to be a, a male or female and uh, they're seven, eight years old and they start giving hormones uh, and all this stuff that the government wants to do and take your child over. And, that's evil of the devil. That's the evil of the devil. I was reading an article the other day. Most of them kids that get into something like that, they grow out of it in a year or two. But some of those kids that they get are young teenagers and they start doing some of that evil stuff to them and it's done they can't grow out of it can they they freaked the rest of their life the truth when it goes against God's word we got to stand up against it wake up America that's what's happened to the world today they want God out of everything they don't want God in nothing so they can be, do their evil agenda the way they want it to be. I could go deeper into some of that stuff, but I won't. I'll leave it alone right now. But I want to tell you, you and I need to look and see where we're at. Take inventory. You got something that's, uh, you know, you know it's not right in your heart? Get rid of it. Ask God to help you to get rid of it. Amen? Get rid of it. <clears throat> He'll give us the strength and what we need to do to get rid of it. You know, you got all these people going to these, uh, uh, and ain't nothing wrong with uh, mega churches. I praise God they're going to God's house, but are they going for the right reason? They're going for the music or going to because uh, they can be a sipping saint and do what they want to do and go to church and come out and feel good? That's wrong. The ears are being tickled. We got to preach the whole word of God, all of it. Not just some of it. It all happens there. Amen. We got to preach it all. Amen. And I'll tell you right now, I could stay on this. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Let's see what the New Testament says right there. <clears throat> Jesus said unto them, he did, Jesus said this, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. If you love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind, you're not going to love them idol worship out there or something that's got in your life and it's become an idol in you. You're going to get rid of it. Are you going to ask God to help you with it? Amen. And you'll be surprised. Some things you might like so much you couldn't stand it, but you sold out to God. When you sold out to God, he showed you that you was using that as an idol in your life, and you wanted he wanted you to get it out, and you get it out. And it might be something you really enjoyed, but uh, if you put it in a balance scale, put him first, love him with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, he might let you do some of that if it's not evil, evil again. Maybe it's a sport or something you're doing and fishing or something and you liked it, you know, but it became your God. On Sunday morning, uh, you took that boat and you was out there fishing all day. There's nothing wrong with that, but you got to put him first. He wants us to enjoy ourselves. Amen. He let Peter go down there and catch a fish with a gold coin in it, man. I'm jealous. None of my fish ever had a gold coin in it. <laughs> and you know why he told Peter to go down he knew Peter liked to fish let him go fish didn't he he became what fisherman of men too didn't he <laughs> let's look here now you see that I can give you another one but that's in the New Testament the Old Testament and the New Testament now let's go a little bit further we've seen uh, the number one is thou shalt have no other gods before me in Exodus 20, <clears throat> verse 4, 
the word of God says, Thou shall make unto thee not make unto thee any graven energy, images, likeness of anything that is heaven above or that is on the earth below or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them, for I am the Lord thy God, a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation to them that hate me. Now I'll tell you, I'm, I'm reading this. This is the second of the Ten Commandments in Exodus. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Okay? This uh, verse 4, that shall make un, uh, not make unto thee any graven images. That's in Exodus, if you got your Bible. I'm, I didn't pull that up because it was too going to be too hard for Ronnie. I felt like that pull up all the extras and pull up all this other one here. So I'm going to read the Exodus, but then I'm going to show you on the screen what the New Testament says, okay? Y'all see that? <clears throat> okay, this is a this is a second one. No graven images. Look, at, look in the books of Acts. No idols is what it's talking about. This is the New Testament. Corresponds uh, with some of the commandments in the Old Testament. Y'all see that? Look at here. But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols. Y'all see that? In other words, you don't go out there and make no images or statues or something. What did old Nebuchadnezzar do? He built a giant statue of gold, and he was going to make everybody worship, except Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we ain't worshiping that dude. We ain't doing it. They, they, they made a stand, didn't they? And they said, we're not worshiping that. That's an idol. We worship the, the true living God. I want to tell you right now, you know, we still have some religious rites and stuff like that. Like if we believe uh, 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 our Bible tells us that uh, you're not supposed to marry Bob and Bob and Sue and Sue. You're supposed to marry man and woman. That's the way God meant it to be. So we should not deviate from that. That's our religious uh, rights to believe what our Bible says. And if our Bible says we're not to bow down to no idol or anything like that out there, that's what we stand on. Amen? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood on it, didn't they? They stood on it so much they trusted God. They said, we'll die, but we're not bound to that, that uh, golden idol. It was a giant statue of old uh, Nebuchadnezzar. And so the old king told him to bow, and everybody bowed except Shadrach, Meshach, and Abendo. He said, well, I want you to. He told his brave soldiers, some of his best, he said, I want you to make this fire in the furnace. Uh, I want you to make it seven times hotter. And said, I want you to throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abendo in that fire. And so them <coughs> soldiers, they fired that furnace up, and guess what? It was so hot it killed them. Because they're standing around it. They throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in there, bound up. And uh, old King Nebuchadnezzar, him and some of his others, was looking in there. And by the way, Daniel was there too. And it hurt him to see that happen to his brothers. And he said, look, said, didn't we throw three in the fire? And they said, yeah. He said, well, I see another and it looks like the son of man. He's seen Jesus is what he's seen standing in there with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they brought him out. They, except Jesus, you know, he, anyway, they got Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out of the furnace, okay? And old Nebuchadnezzar looked at them, and all the clothes they had on, the, the ropes was gone. But all the clothes they had on, everything about them, had not been singed or burned at all. But yet his brave soldiers that started the furnace and got it seven times hotter died it was that hot. They stood up, didn't they? Are you willing to stand up for what you believe in God's word? They's going, they may come a time in here <clears throat> that we got to, I, I look for it, that we got to stand up for what we believe in, what God's word says. We got to stand behind God's word because he's standing behind for us. Amen. They may come a time that you might, you might have to do that. <clears throat> I'll tell you. I mean, it's an awesome thing, amen? You got people all over the world. You got China. They call it what? The underground uh, churches over there. And they, man, they're getting saved left and right over there. And that uh, old whatever his name is, mouthy tongue or whatever his name is over there, thinks he's a big dictator and going to rule the world with all this stuff he's got going on. Uh, he's going to republish Bibles and he's going to 
take out some stuff he don't like and he's going to contaminate it and give it to all the Chinese people out there. Won't work. God said, you add to or take away from any of my word, you're going to be, the curse is going to be on you. Amen. So he, they don't know what's fixing to happen to them. They're fixing to <laughs> right, light the fuse for their fireworks showing up. <laughs> All right. Think about it. It's good, ain't it? Let's go a little bit further. <clears throat> we can see all this stuff in the world that's going on around us. Amen. Now, this is in the New Testament. Write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from, strain, from things strangled and from blood. We ain't supposed to, you know, human blood and stuff like that. And uh, you're not supposed to, you know, uh, eat that or nothing like that. Let's go a little bit further right here and look. Uh, now, that was, uh, that was the second commandment. Let's look at the third commandment. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not, ho will, will not hold him a guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Man, do you... <laughs> You can't turn on the TV now and try to look at a decent movie unless it's black and white and it ain't got a cuss word in it. And the best thing you can do is turn it to got a cuss word in it because it's going to be filthy. I mean, what happened to my heroes, my cowboys, you know? I had to watch the black and white. <laughs> now, look at here. We're going we're gonna to see what the profanity, Okay. I used to cuss. I used to cuss. I know there's some more in here who used to cuss. You broke one of the Ten Commandments, didn't you? Huh? Uh-huh. But I'll tell you right now, we serve a forgiven, forgiven God. But we ain't supposed to take uh, the Lord thy God's name. You know, I used to have an uncle, and I loved him so much. I, I really did. But, man, he loved to use the gd word so much it hurt me especially when i became a christian it hurt me to get around him and you know the fool says in heart there ain't no god he didn't think there was no god and you know i was going to tell him one time before he died he, he was from florida and i love him i, I still love him this he was he was my my uncle and my blood and i loved him and uh but i'll tell you right now i was going to ask him why are you cussing god all the time won't you love him you ever thought about that? I, I remember one time, y'all probably heard this before, I went in this place in my business and I was having to call on this big buyer in the plant. And I went in there and I was waiting on him to come in and talk with me. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm sitting there and he comes in, man, and he's using some of the worst language you ever heard. And, I mean, you know, sailors can do some cussing. Now, I, done, I cuss, but I, I didn't like to use God's name in my cussing but I did do it sometimes and I'm ashamed of it to this day but I was sitting in there that man in his office and he come in there he was cussing up and down the road you know and I'm saying to myself God what can I do to shut him up that's right that's what I say it's sitting there in my little suit and tie what can I do to shut this dude up man and you know I'm sitting there you know what God told me we was getting ready to go to the Dominican about a week, about a month or so, and behind his desk and everything, he had these shelves, and he had beanie weenies and vanilla sausage and all the little stuff, potted meat you grab off and eat with a cracker quick on the run. He had that back there, you know. I said, you know, and it's back 30 years ago, we had to take our food to the Dominican Republic. We didn't, we couldn't get the stuff over there, and we took beanie weenies and 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 and, and all of that stuff. Over there, if you, and if your food trunk got stuck, boy, you had to borrow from everybody else until they found it, if they found it. But anyway, I'm sitting there, and the Lord showed me, and I said, man, I said, I'm fixing to go to Dominican Republic on a missionary trip, and I said, I'm, I've got to, I'm having to buy all that stuff up and take it with us because we can't get it over there. Where are we going? And you know that man that cussed like a sailor, turned around and said, bam, I'm a deacon in a church. I said, you're taking in the church? I said, man, that's awesome. <laughs> but, 
we got talking about the missionary and the, and the trip I was going on, all that stuff, and I uh, conducted some business with him too. But he shut up immediately and went from that cursing God and all of that stuff, and all of a sudden now he's a deacon in a church. Think he's some bad fruit there? That's a no-brainer, isn't it? He really said that. But God showed me how to shut him up. He didn't cuss no more. He could do it. We're not supposed to cuss. And you know, people do it. It's the way the world is. And uh, it's just an awesome thing. So we see that in the Old Testament. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. The Lord will not, the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Now let's look at Colossians and see what Colossians say. Yes. Now this is in the New Testament, y'all. So this is in the Old Testament. This is the uh, third commandment we're talking about. And so let's see what the New Testament says right here. But now you also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. You know what my mother used to tell me? is, You don't shut up your mouth and talking like that. I'm going to wash your mouth out with soap. Them mamas knew how to do it, didn't they? Clean it up real quick. <laughs> now we're in the New, New Testament right here. Now put off all of these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. That's the New Testament. And the Old Testament said, you know, you, uh, God said, uh, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. So this is the third commandment in the Old Testament, uh, the book of Exodus. Now we in the New Testament seeing what the New Testament said. So is that still prevalent today? Amen. I'm glad, ain't you? Bad's bad and good's good, isn't it? Think about it. Let's go a little bit further right here. Let's look at number four. Remember the seventh day to keep it holy. Let me see if I got that note here. Yeah. Let's look at the seventh day. I'm not going to read all of those right there. I'm going to read Mark 2, 27. The word, and this is in the New Testament. And he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the seventh day. Now, you know, in the Old Testament, you couldn't do nothing unless your mule fell in a ditch. I think you was live. You could get your mule out of the ditch, you know. But in the Old Testament, buddy, you couldn't cook. You couldn't turn on a light. You couldn't do nothing. And the New Testament is made for man. Okay, now look right here. We'll go ahead and read it. Therefore, the Son of Man is the Lord also on the seventh day. But God's telling us here on the seventh day we need to worship him. We need to do our work during the week and whatever. And we've established since Jesus was born to Sunday's going to be our day that we're going to worship God. And we're supposed to do that. God wants us to do that. Amen. Think about that. Let's go a little bit further right here and uh, look at the next one that's coming up. Now, remember the seventh day. Let's go down here to... Uh, the fifth, uh, the law against par uh, uh, parental dishonor, okay? The fifth commandment in Exodus is uh, Exodus 20, number 12. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long in the, in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now, that's the fifth commandment in the Old Testament of Exodus 20, <clears throat> uh, Exodus 20, 12. Now, I want to look in the New Testament and see what it says. And you can go on further with this right here, and I'll tell you right now, the Word of God said, those people that dishonor their parents, their days can be cut short. I'll just tell you what the Word says. Let's look right here and see what it says in the New Testament about that. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and thy mother. He that uh, curseth thy father and mother, let him die the death. Now, I'll tell you, <clears throat> I honor my mother and daddy. As I got older, I honored them more. Amen. I did. But the Bible says those that are bad to their mom and daddy and, don't, and they dishonor them and stuff like that, really bad, man, their days can be cut short. I'm telling you, it's a serious thing. It's a serious thing. Now, that was uh, honor thy father and mother. That was the fifth commandment in the Old Testament. We're going to go to the sixth commandment <coughs> in the Old Testament. It is... It is Exodus 20, verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. <clears throat> Y'all see that? 
Now, I'm going to show you what it says in the New Testament. Now, I'll tell you this. I'm talking about premeditated murders, things like that. We have to kill when we go to war. I know. We have to help the, the people out there that's being persecuted in human rights. God wants us to do that. God wants us to go to war and try to stop evil that's trying to take over this world. He wants us to stand up for what's right. Did you know that? And so when we do that, we have to kill and do stuff like that. Bottom line, was, was Goliath evil? Was he coming against Israel? Was he trying to destroy them? You think Israel should sit there and say, don't kill him? Uh-uh, you kill him. You get the evil out. Thou shalt not kill. But what he's talking about is murder and things like that, premeditated. God, no, God's not for that. But God's for uh, uh, the penalty for murder out there is death. That's some of it. So you see the difference? You see the difference? Look at here what the Word of God says in the New Testament. <clears throat> we have heard that it's said of them of old time, thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in, in danger of the judgment. So you got you if you kill somebody <clears throat> self defense or accidentally or premeditated days laws we have laws uh, uh, that covers those areas. But I say unto you that whosoever <clears throat> is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother Rakai shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. <clears throat> now, how many knows what that word rakai means? I didn't know what it meant either, but I always look in words up in the dictionary when I don't know what they mean. <laughs> it means vain, worthless, empty fool, and extreme punishment. Back in the Hebrew days, around Jesus' day, they used that word a lot. Extreme punishment. What did it say right there? Rakai shall be in danger of the council. Now, the Bible says right here, Jesus said, uh, <clears throat> but I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a call shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say unto his brother Rakai shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say thou fool shall be uh, in danger of hell fire. Now, <clears throat> that's the way I read that. I'm going to tell you something. I don't call nobody a fool. <laughs> and I don't call nobody an idiot. I might call them a dumb turkey or something like that, but I don't call them fool or idiots. <laughs> Think about it. Praise God. This is good, isn't it? We're comparing the Old Testament with the New Testament. And so those skeptics out there that want to tell you all oh, the Ten Commandments ain't no good anymore. <laughs> you go out there and steal, kill, and destroy, and do some of those things and see if you don't go to jail. Y'all see it? <clears throat> Where are we at here? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Thou shalt not kill. Jesus said it up there in verse 21. Now let's go on down here where it says uh, uh, the law against the thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Oh, that's one of the devil's biggest things that he does with the flesh of humans. Did you know that? He puts uh, temptations out there, and the devil uses that adultery uh, to send a lot of people to hell. Look here. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That is number seven in the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, 14. It talks about that. Let's see what Jesus said about it. You have heard it said that, that by them of old time thou shalt not commit adultery. Now, that's what the Lord showed me on this one the other day when I was studying it too. But I say unto you that whosoever shall look upon the woman to lust after her hath committed adultery already in his heart. Men have to fight against that. Women have to fight against that. But you know what the Lord showed me on this scripture right here too? Y'all see this? I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. You got pornography that's destroying preachers. You got the pornography that's destroying our community. It's making a terrible thing out of our community. We got uh, all kind of uh, uh, 
what is this? Uh, we've seen the movie the other day about uh, uh, human trafficking. That is awful and horrible thing that's going on, and America is the worst one. It's because of all of this right here. The devil takes something that God gives us that's beautiful and turns it around for evil. Y'all see that? Think about it. These people out there have got their kids and their daughters and stuff out there that can be stole. That we seen that movie the other day based on a true thing, a, a Christian man. The little boy and the girl was stole. But God's mercy and grace, that man got them back. That's, 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 that's something. But we see that going on, don't we? The lust after hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Have you ever noticed you'd be watching something Christian on TV and a commercial come on? It'll be some kind of pornography or something evil or nasty injected right in there. You might be reading the scripture on your phone and, oh, man, this is good, and all of a sudden some of that junk pops up in front of you. They inject that. The demons of hell of this world inject all of that stuff in there. That's right. It's there. It's happening. I mean, I'm telling you. So what, men, women? You got to be strong. You got to stay close to God. You know, that temptation is an awful thing for mankind. But man, I don't, I don't mean it's wrong, but it can get you eternity real quick, real quick. Look right here. But I say unto you that whosoever shall look upon a woman lust after her, he hath committed adultery with her already in his heart now that was uh, a <clears throat> number seven of the commandments and that is in exodus 20 verse 14 oh here's another good one this verse this uh, eighth commandment in the old testament we're going to see what jesus said about it i i, I a lot of us in here I, I'll, I'll use myself i probably broke about all of these but i ain't proud about it Look at here what the next one says. He said unto him, which Jesus said. He said unto him, which Jesus said. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. We ain't supposed to steal either. <clears throat> Man, I was a thief. I was a thief. They caught me on a stolen motorcycle doing 110 miles an hour and pulled us over. I'm telling on myself. I could tell you a bunch of stuff, but I won't. Uh, me and a buddy of mine, I won't tell you nothing. I stole, I lied, I done all that stuff. Throw the first stone who has not sinned. Amen. Uh-huh. I don't see nobody picking up no stones. Let me tell you this. One time me and my buddy, we wanted to go to Myrtle Beach, and we needed some money, so... I was working at the uh, theater, tearing tickets, two years while I went to high school. So this dude come in with these nice wire hubcaps on this good-looking 390 Ford, and he parks over there to watch the movie. So me and my buddy, we slip over the cement block wall while he goes down there to get him a hot dog. We pop him hubcaps, baby. We gone. Oh, there's more to the story. He had a praying mom and daddy, evidently. So we sold them hubcaps, and we went to Myrtle Beach. But the power of God is strong, isn't he? You know, and God forgive me for my sins. I've done a lot of things, uh, hor horrible, terrible things and stuff. And I, I don't know why he saved a rich like me, but he has. But give you more to that story in those hub gaps. <clears throat> I was down there and I opened up a church in Greenwood. Now this is about 30 years after I stole them hub gaps. <laughs> but I was down there in Greenwood and I opened up this church. And God told me to open it up in a, in a beer joint, man. It was a powerful little church. People got healed, set free, and delivered there. People going to commit suicide with guns. and They got healed, set free, and delivered in that little church. But anyway, listen to this. We, 
went on vacation. Man, I love clocks and stuff like that. You know, real ones that's got real gears, not this, not this battery charged up stuff. I like a real clock, you know, got gears in it, baby. Man, I always wanted me a grandfather clock. So, man, I went up there to Pigeon Forge up there, and I seen this giant grandfather clock, beautiful carved wood. I said, man, I want that bad boy. So I bought that bad boy, and they come down there, and they put it in my house. They set it up, and it's going ding, dong, ding. Oh, man, it's beautiful. You pull the little thing, gravity weights come down. Oh, I, I would just love it. So they got it in there. You know, I'm paying payments on that bad boy. And I said, Lord, if you help me pay that thing off, I'll pay for them hubcaps I stole. I don't know where that come from. I don't know where that come from. Been 30 years. I didn't have to come up with that. I don't know why I did that. But I made a covenant with God. So it rocked on about seven years, and I hadn't fulfilled my covenant yet. Oh, I got the clock paid for in just a few months. God helped me pay for it just like that. And so I made a covenant with God. And, man, I got the feeling, of, man, I can't call that man up. They like put me in jail. They like put me in jail, man. And the other boy helped me. He had already died. <laughs> and, 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 and I wouldn't tell nobody who it was because I loved the old boy, you know. Yeah, he done died. Alcohol took him away. But he lived on his, he, he got saved on his deathbed. He, re, uh, he really did. And me and him used to play baseball in the leagues together and all that, you know. Anyway. So here I am seven years later, and the Lord reminded me. You made a cup of me. You best fulfill it, boy. He was serious, and I knew it. And so, man, I got to looking around and try to find out where this boy is at. And wh he lives in Greenville. I, I, I don't know where he's at. I used to drag race. I beat him in my Camaro. He had a 394, and I had a 327 Camaro. Tore him up. Anyway, that's beside the point. I'm telling y'all this to, to give God the glory. But this, you make a covenant with God, you better, you better stand. And I have learned I don't make covenants with God no more. That's, I'm telling you the truth. I don't do it. All them, them evangelists get there and say, oh, you're going to make a commitment and a covenant to pay so-and-so. The last one I made, me and Becky bought two cows for James Payne. We did, didn't we, honey? When the money come in, we bought two cows for James Payne's about a year later. I made a commitment there. But I don't usually, I won't make it, but it's got to be something for I, I, I've learned my lesson. Okay, listen to this. So God said, uh, so I come into Greenville. I'm living in Greenwood, I think. I'm coming in Greenwood. I'm looking looking for this boy. And I'm asking people about where, where he might be. And lo and behold, I found, I found where he's at. Believe it or not, he lived just a few blocks from here. How do you go down there and tell the boy you've done this? He don't call the law. We go out there and whoop it out on the street there, you know. I said, I made up my mind. I said, well, God, I told you I'd do this. And I said, you with me? I said, I'm going to do what I told you I'd do. I went down there and knocked on the door. He comes over. Hey, man, it's been years. Where you been, man? Oh, it's good to see you. How you doing, buddy? I said, I got something to tell you. And I said, I don't want to tell you this, but I got to do it because I'm a Christian now. I'm a Christian man, and I love God, and God has told me to do this, and I got to obey God. So we, I'm sitting down at the table with him and his wife. And... His wife was from uh, India, I think it was. Anyway, I'm sitting down with him and his wife at the table. And I said, listen, i got something to tell you. And, he, uh, he, and, and I said, I don't want to tell you this, but i got to because God told me to. I'm a Christian. i got to do what's right. And God told me how much to give him. I got $25 for the hubcaps. He told me to give him $300. So I said, listen. I stole your hubcaps, man, years ago. 
And I said, God told me to get it right. And see, that's why I say I know he had a praying mom and daddy, and I'm pretty sure he did. They probably prayed that boy who got them up there was going to get him back. Anyway, that's what I felt. So I told him, I said, I, I stole your hubcaps, and I said, I want to pay you back. He said, no, you didn't do that, did you? And I said, yes, I did. And I started crying. I told him, I'm sorry. I said, would you forgive me? He said, man, I'll forgive you. Don't worry about that. That's, we was young. I said, no, I'm not leaving this house till I give you this money. He said, no, I don't want that money. You keep it. I said, I will not leave this house till you take this money. I got an obligation to God Almighty. He said, well, I, you know, it's a, it's a coincidental thing, Rick. He said, I've been feeding my wife's people in a village over there. And said, people's been helping me, and they quit helping me. And he said, this money, I'm going to send it to them because it's exactly what we need to feed those people. Do we serve on time, God? <laughs> Do we serve an on time, God? Man, I don't know how God puts up with me. <laughs> I mean, I... You know, this is the truth. You make a covenant, God, you better keep it. Seven years I dragged on there, and, and he reminded me. And I looked and studied covenant, and I said, yes, sir. It's a serious thing. But I stole. I, I, done, I, I don't understand why God would choose me. but he loves us. You know, it's funny. He can choose somebody from a real bit in the mud and use them in a mighty way. You know what I'm saying? Can't he? Can't he? Let's look right here, y'all. Is that good? That's God. Who, who had ever dreamed I'd get to share that as a testimony to glorify God in it? It glorified God. Think about that. Let's go back here to 7. It's thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. We're talking about stealing. We ain't supposed to steal. That's, that's wrong. Man, I wouldn't steal a penny. Now that I've become a Christian, not a penny. Because i got to be accountable to God. Amen? It ain't worth it, y'all. I mean nothing. you got to be straight arrow. you got to be straight down the line when you become a Christian. All of these things maybe we used to do, we don't do no more, y'all. We don't do them no more. You become a Christian, you're supposed to obey the commandments, and he's telling you some of these things. There's more than this, but the ten one major ones we're looking at right now. And we're looking at the New Testament, what it says in the New Testament about them. Not just the Old Testament. I'm going old and new. Okay, look here. Thou shalt not steal. That was number eight. We've got two more to go, y'all. Look here, he says, which Jesus said, Thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Now let me ask you this. Who said that in the New Testament? Jesus said it. If Jesus said it, I believe it, don't you? I'll tell you right now, thou shalt not steal. We just looked at that. And uh, listen to this. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Y'all see that? That's in number 16 of Exodus 20, 16. That's number 9. What did Jesus say right there? Thou shalt not bear false witness. Now, that's lying. That's lying on somebody. I never did do that. I learned that a long time ago. You get a black eye doing that. <laughs> I could... I could tell you something on that too, but I won't. You learn real quick. Men learn real quick, man. They don't do that. They don't do that golfing stuff because you're going to be called out. Ain't that right, Rand Randall over here? Yeah, that's right. You don't bear, you don't lie on somebody. But you know, back in the uh, in the biblical days a lot and everything, and today too, they lie. People lie. They lie all the time. I'll pay you $20 to lie. Tell them you done it. I mean, it, it goes on everywhere. Thou shalt not bear false witness. That's one, I mean, think about it. It goes on. People lie about, did you see so-and-so do so-and-so and they did that? That's a lie. 
Hitler lied with propaganda and tried to take over the world, y'all. Think about it. Think about it. That's, that's serious. Now, that's the, that was number nine in Exodus 2016. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Okay, here's number 10. Everybody ready for this in Exodus uh, 17, I believe it is, covetousness. We're not supposed to covenant stuff. You know what I mean? Well, Frank's got a brand new Corvette Stingray down there, and he's got a big old house, and he's got boats down there. I want every bit of it. I'll take his wife, too. I mean, that, that goes on, y'all. I mean, I mean I, I'm telling you the truth. It's, it's not good. It's happening everywhere. I want to tell you this. When I got saved on fire for the Lord, when I see Frank Downer, I'm just using that name, or Marcel, whoever it may be, if he got a million dollars or he got a Corvette Stingray, I'd rather have a four-by four, four, four by truck anyway. But anyway, he got a Corvette Stingray, and he got all that. You know, back in my old days, he said, man, I, I want that. I'd like to have I, well, Man, I'm glad for that guy. I rejoice. If I see somebody got a million dollars, I rejoice for that person. Man, praise God. I, God blessing them. I'm happy for them. If they got big houses and cars and do all that, I, I'm happy for them that God's blessing them that way. You see the way it changes? When you become a Christian, you stop coveting things, okay? Think about it. I, I want this big old farm out there in uh in Oklahoma, the whole state, I'll take the whole state. <laughs> I'm just using that as an example, okay? I'm coming and I want it all. I want the cows and everything. People do that, though, don't they? I mean, you know, we can have humor in the Word of God, but I, I, I'm telling you, covetousness is a big thing for people out there. Well, so-and-so come in here with a pair of red shoes, and I will have me a pair of them. I want them, matter of fact. That's covenant them shoes, isn't it? Think about it. I'm just using some, you know, some examples that you can look at. Covenant is a serious thing. And, you know, but when you become a Christian, like I say, man, I love to see people blessed. I don't care what's going on. I'm happy for them. Amen? Think about that. That's right. The lust of the eyes can get you in big trouble. Now, that's, that's number 10, right? Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Y'all laughed at me a while ago. Listen, listen to this. Thou shalt number, not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Thou uh, uh, or his manservant or his ox nor his ass or anything is thy neighbor's. That said it, didn't it? Think about it. Think about it. That's a big serious one out there going on today. Everybody covets stuff that they don't need anyway most of the time, but they think they want it. The grass is greener on the other side. Wrong. Think about it. But when you become a Christian, man, you got the fire of God in you, and some of these things that just talking about here, you don't want to do them no more. It ain't that you you don't want to do them no more. Man, I, man, I wouldn't steal a penny anymore. I can tell you nothing. No, I won't do it. I tell you right now, honest, somebody gives me $20 and I gave them a dollar bill, I'm going to give them back the $20 and say, you, you got change wrong here. Me and my wife done that before with people. Amen? I remember one time they gave me a set of mag wheel tires to go on my Bronco. It was bad to the bone. And the guy forgot to charge me for the rims, chrome reverse rims. He charged me for the tires. And I went home and I looked on my bill and I said, man, he forgot to charge me for all them tires. Quattro, four of them. And you know, I could have said this. I said, man, I got man, I got a deal on that. Somebody had stole them the next night. But you know what I said? I'm going back in the morning and tell that boy what he done. I went back the next day and I said, listen, you put tires on my Bronco, man, it looks so good, but you forgot to charge me for the tires. He said, oh, you serious? Let me look. And he looked and he said, oh, man, said, I can't believe you come back and told me this. You an honest man. No, I'm a Christian. No, I'm a Christian. Them, what, them tires, when I sold that Bronco, never did wear out. They didn't. 
You do what's right. I seen in the paper the other day where this dude was fishing or something, and he found this dog on, uh, I think it was a bilfo inside this fish, had Visa cards in it and $2,000. And he took the Visa card and got the man's name, called the man up and said, listen, I got your bilfo, I got your Visa card, and I got you $2,000. And that man said, what? And he was a farmer, and he needed that $2,000. He was taking it to buy something, and he lost it or something. Oh, it slipped off of his, out of his pocket on a boat. He was sitting on a boat, and it slipped out of his pocket. Fish ate it. He cleaned the fish. Or, or maybe, he, maybe he just caught it. I can't remember if he caught it or what. I can't remember what it was. But I'm telling you, I had a, I had a boss. He was my regional manager. He was out there on a jet ski, and he lost his visa card. It was flickering down up at Lake Lelua. And a big bass eat it. And a man caught the bass and called him up about two weeks later and said, are you so-and-so, so-and-so? And, -so, so -and -so? He said, yeah, I got your visa card. said, I caught this fish, weighed about eight pounds or ten pounds, and said it had your visa card in it. <laughs> that really happened, y'all. But I want to tell you this. That man was honest and called him up and said, listen, I got it. Could you do that if you found ten thousand dollars? You better. And if you do, you'll get blessed. By the way, the boy that found the bill for two thousand dollars, the man tried to give him a reward and he would not take it. But he did let the man take him and his parents out to dinner in Alaska. No. <laughs> I'm I'm messing with y'all. No, no, really, I, I, let's get back to serious here. I'm sorry, y'all. I get this on me and it gets going. <laughs> listen, you ever listen to Jerry Clowers? You need to listen to him. <laughs> Knock him out, John. Listen to this, y'all. You got to be honest. Some, something happens out there or whatever. You find somebody something or whatever, give it back to him, man. God will bless you more for you giving it back than, he, than you would if you, if you kept it. A good example is, if I hadn't took him tire, told him what he'd done, I, man, I was on fire, Pentecostal fire. I went down. I was so happy to tell him what he'd done and everything. He called me an honest man. That made me feel good, too, because I used to not be that way. <laughs> but anyway, I guarantee somebody has stole them tires. But I'm here to tell you, I kept that Bronco a long time and uh, liked it. And uh, anyway, when I sold it to this old boy, had them chrome reverse rims still on it, and them white leather tires was still good. It had a lot of miles on it, not wore out. That's the God we serve. That's the God we serve, y'all. So we need to serve him. We need to obey his commandments and follow his commandments because he does it because he loves us, and he knows if we disobey his commandments, uh, there's going to be a penalty that you'll have to come up with and, and you'll have to face. But I want to tell you right now, do y'all see the old covenant and I mean, the old uh, covenant and the new covenant, the new testament? Y'all see it? We we went from the old to the new. I thought that was was kind of unique. It shows it right in. It's in there. So you know, it's there. God's an awesome God and He loves us. Listen to this. Before we got saved, most of us broke. The Ten Commandments, pretty much. We still war with the cardinal and the spirit man. Did you know that? Did you know the, the spirit man and the cardinal man? Man, they war all the time. But, man, you put God's word in you every day, and you'll whoop that joker. Look at here. We still war with the, the cardinal and the spirit man. Grow in the spirit. Grow the spirit man and have the victory. Amen. You'll walk a victorious life by growing the spirit man. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to ask every head bow. Thank you for being here tonight. And we appreciate the people on the Internet being here tonight, too. I tell you, you know, I praise God for these Ten Commandments. It gives us guidelines. We know we ain't supposed to do something. God will convict you if you're doing something. You'll know it. He'll convict you if you're his. Now, if you ain't his, your conscience has been sheared. 
Let's every head bowed. I want to pray. Folks on the internet, thank you so much for being with us tonight. I pray this word just has got in your spirit. And I pray if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, that you'll come to know him. You'll ask him and seek his face and he'll come to you and he'll save you and he'll forgive you of your sins because he loves you so much. Thank you for being with us. God bless you for being with us tonight. God, I pray in Jesus' name you touch everybody that's in here in a special way. And God, I thank you when we became a Christian, we started obeying your commandments. And I thank you, God, in Jesus' holy name, God, that you give us the strength uh, that we can obey your commandments and not break your word anymore, God. And when we do, God, forgive us, help us to get it right the way we're supposed to be. We want to be pleasing to you so we can be worthy to go in the rapture, God. Bless each and every one here tonight. Thank you for everyone represented here tonight, God. I lift them up to you, God. And I pray, God, you let their heart bubble over with joy this week like never before. In Jesus' holy name. Everybody said amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here. It's good to be in the house of God. Boy, the word's good, isn't it? Isn't the word good? I just love it. I tell you, man, it just gets gooder and gooder. <laughs> Give somebody a handshake before you leave and tell them you appreciate them being here. Uh huh.